assalam alaikum this is my last lecture on the connective tissue in the last lecture we were discussing about the types of connective tissue and now we will discuss the types of dense connective tissue which are divided into two dense irregular connective tissue and dense regular connective tissue as the name indicates the dense irregular connective tissue fibers will be irregularly arranged and the bulk of the fibers uh, and the tissues arranged in bundles oriented in various directions the cell population is sparse and typically of single type mainly fibroblast ground substance is also less and the example would be the submucosa in the intestinal tract one in case of dense connective tissue it is characterized by the orderly and densely packed arrays of fibers cells are densely packed there will be less number of cells ground substance densities of blood and lymphatic vessels it is main functional component of tendons ligaments and epineurosis now there are some special types of connective tissue proper which is adipose connective tissue fat cells or patches of adipocytes dispersed through most loose connective tissue design, designated as adipose tissue they are seen under the skin surrounds organs such as kidneys suprarenal glands grooves of heart white bone marrow mesenteries as well as axillary cervical and inguinal regions the cells show a thin layer of cytoplasm as a ring around the vacuole left by the removed lipid droplet the so called signet ring cell cell membrane include a glycoprotein layer cytoplasm contain golgi operators mitochondria a paucity of endoplasmic reticulum ribosomes vesicles of smooth endoplasmic reticulum and microtubules adipose tissue is subdivided into incomplete lobules by partition of connective tissue containing blood vessels and nerves we will found here reticular fibers that will branch from these partition and support individual fat cells adipose tissue is richly vascularized what are the types of adipose tissues these are of mainly two types unilocular multilocular unilocular is also known as white adipose tissue while multilocular is also known as brown adipose tissue so the unilocular or white adipose tissues contains only one fat droplet in the cytoplasm it is yellow in color due to the present of presence of keratinocytes the cells are spherical when isolated all adult tissues type is yellow type except lobule of auricle scrotum eyelids while the multilocular or brown adipose tissue cells are polygonal in shape and are smaller cytoplasm contain a great number of lipid droplets and numerous mitochondria rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum are not abundant brown color why it is known as the brown adipose tissue because there is a high content of cytochromes in the mitochondria and these are commonly seen in the hibernating animals embryos and newborn this is the diagram showing the white adipose tissue you can see the single globlet of fat and this is the peripherally eccentrically arranged nucleus you can see here these are all white adipose tissues these are well vascularized with the reticular connective tissue fibers next we have the brown adipose tissue which is multilocular you can see here these are the nuclei these are the lipid droplets you can see here the multilocular appearance and polygonal shape these are mainly present in the infants to provide in uh, warmth and energy then we have the reticular connective tissue it is located in the areas re uh, requiring delicate matting framework for support as in bone marrow lymphoid organs liver spleen lymph nodes kidneys and endocrine glands the fibers are arranged in a diffuse network or stroma they support functional cell components of gland 
reticulin fibers composed of protein called the reticulin reticulin fibers are very fine with a diameter of 0.2 to 0.5 micrometers these are not visible in the hna staining which is known as hematoxylin eosin staining you can see here in the diagram this is a diagram of the lymph node here the reticular fibers are shown these mainly show the silver staining again these are the reticular fibers present in the lymph nodes demonstrated by means of impregnation with the silver salts and by the pass technique fibers are ergylophilic because of affinity with the silver salts when impregnated with silver they appear black this affinity with the silver salts and pass positive is due to the high content of hexoses fibers are composed mainly of type 3 collagen and have a more carbohydrate content which is about 10 times more than the collagen fibers now we have the elastic connective tissue which is predominance of elastic fibers other fibers through though present are reduced in number color of the elastic tissue is yellow fibers are arranged mostly in parallel though may join other bundle groups fiber groups are supported by fibrocyte and collagen fibers they are vascular and nerve supply is limited and fibers are elastic and may stretch at least twice their length in living tissues they are pale yellow with hne stain they stain bright red they have high refractive index darker than collagen fibers in unstained preparations these are the elastic fibers if we discuss about the elastic fiber they are single structure lacking any periodicity elastic fibers are composed of two components elastin and the microfibrils elastin which occupies central portion rich in proline and glycine and poor in hydroxyproline stains pale because it has little affinity for the heavy metals while microfibrils are fibrillar glycoprotein straight and thin Firstly there is proelastin with the enzymatic removal of a tail piece of molecule it converts it into the tropoelastin then four tropoelastin molecules linked together by lysine group by lysyl oxidase due to the cross linking of tropoelastin there is the formation of elastin what is the clinical significance of the elastin in the Mar marfan syndrome where there is a complex connective tissue disorder there is defect in the fibrillin protein and abnormal elastic tissue then is the scleroderma this is a skin disease associated with the accumulation of elastin this is the diagram of marfan syndrome here you can see the radiograph showing collapse of the dental arches with associated malocclusion again these are the long fingers of the marfan syndrome with elast increased elasticity and flexibility this is the diagram of scleroderma which have the excess elastin and difficulty in the mouth opening due to involvement of perioral skin again scleroderma of the hand this is the scleroderma with extreme fixation of the skin to the subjacent connective tissue this was all about the connective tissue you can see these are the references thank you